Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install FastFetch on Dockage. So, a little bit about this series, I'm going over home labs, installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel, and let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on Discourse, so go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So. Let's get back to your registered programming. So uh, I'll be installing uh, today FastFetch. It's actively maintained, feature rich, and performance oriented a NeoFetch like system information tool. Um, NeoFetch is gone now, so FastFetch took over, um, and it's being developed over here. Um, so, uh, I had a lot of suggestions, uh, to make this into a Docker image, so I went ahead and done that. Um, it's not exactly perfect, um, but it's open source, so if anybody has any ideas on how to improve it, uh, you can go to Big Bird Docker Images on GitHub and, uh, submit a pull request. Um, so, this is what it looks like. So, I'm gonna get to explaining the Docker and Pose now. So I'm going to start on Big Bear Video Assets. There will be linked on the YouTube description to get to this. I'm going to go over the search and type fa fast. And then now you see how to install FastFetch on Dockage right here. So I'm going to go into it. And then I'm going to go to the Docker and Pose. So once we copy this and we go put it in our Dockage, um, you can easily come back to this repo right here and then copy it and then paste it in there. And you'll have the updated uh, ver versions as they come because this repo is updated automatically. Um, so I'm going to uh, explain the Docker and Pose now. So ser services and then the first service underneath the services is called Big Bear Fast Fetch. And then the container name is going to be called Big Bear Fast Fetch. And this is so Docker doesn't have to generate a random name. The image is coming off of Docker by default because there's no year before this. This is the, doc, the, doc, the Docker image. This is the doc, Docker image tag. And then container restart policy is set, set to unless stopped. So that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails any other reason, then it will try to restart. And then now I'm going to set this container to privileged is true to allow more access. And then I'm going to mount the necessary uh, binds down here. So proc. Uh, this is on the host side, and then on the container side is proc. So the left side is the host, the right side is the container, and sa same with this one, and sa uh, same with this one, and also this one. The only thing different with this one is etc local time is on the host, and on the container is etc local time, and then it's set to read only. So now we're, we're going to map the port. So 7681 is on the host side. If this does collide with another port on your host, you can change it to like 7682, but you will need to cha change that to go to the UI. And then on the container is 7681. Do not change the container's port. So I'm going to go over here to copy raw file. I'm going to click it. Then I'm going to go over to my dockage and get this set up. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it, and it greatly supports this channel, and I very much appreciate it. So, uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down in the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So, let's get back to registered programming. So, now I'm going to start on my dockage, and I'm going to go up to Compose right here, click it. Then, I'm going to go over to Stack Name, and I'm going to put a stack name of Fast Fetch In. And then I'm going to go over to the editor over here and I'm going to paste in the Docker and Post I explained over in Big Bird Video Assets. Once you do that, you'll have the editor populated over here and then you can also see it in the UI over here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and set deploy. So now what this is doing is it's downloading the Docker image off the registry, getting extracted, getting it up with Docker and Post underneath because it is using the Docker engine. So now we got it up and running and you can see it in the logs down here. So now I'm going to um, go over the dockage UI a little bit. 
Um, so on the home page, you'll see active, exited, and inactive. And this is the status of your stacks over here. Um, so I'm going to go into the stack. So you have your actions up here. So edit, restart, update, stop, and then stop and inactive, and then de uh, de delete. Um, when you update, it's going to pull the same tag off the registry and just update it. And if the developer pushed to that exact same tag, you'll get the updates from the developer. It won't change the tag. So uh, now you see containers in the stack, and you can go to the UI by clicking the port right here. You can also go to bash and go inside the container, and then sh as well. So you you can go backwards to the stack, and now you can see logs down here. This is great for debugging. Um, you can see a read-only version of the Docker Compose over here, and if you want to edit the Docker Compose, you go up to the edit button and you click it. Now you'll see actions up here. So deploy the changes, save the changes, stop and inactive, and then discard the changes. You can also add a service underneath the services, like that. And then now we have a service underneath services right here, and we added it through the UI. You can go ahead and, and click on this edit button, and you can click on the text box right here, and you can click the image. And then now it's added an image underneath the service. You can also delete the service by clicking the delete, and now it's gone. And then you can add your rails, you can set environment variables, you can set the networks internal and external. So that's a little bit about Dockage UI. So now we're going to go to the UI and see if it works. So we're going to go over to fast fetch right here, and then we're going to click on the port of 7681 right here. And now you see OS, host, kernel, uptime, packages, and then shell, the terminal, CPU, GPU, memory, swap, disk, local IP, and then locale. Now, so, some of this information is for the Docker image, um, but uh, it shows uh, some information for the host as well. Um, so if you have ideas on how to improve it, let me know. Uh, you, you can start a forum post on Big Bear Community, or you can submit a pull request to Big Bear Docker Images. So that's getting FastFetch working on Dockage. So I just went over step-by-step -step on getting FastFetch running on Dockage. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or any community support, you can go down to the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.